Hello everyone! In conjunction with this month's World Mental Health Day, today we are coming together to explore the symbolism of roses and their connection to mental health using art to spread awareness and hope. Roses, with their beauty and strength, reminds us that even in the face of challenges, we can still bloom and grow. Before we begin painting, try to find a quiet and comfortable environment conducive to creativity and self-expression. Let's gather your painting supplies and take a moment to center yourself. Once you are ready, let's embark on this creative journey together. Before we start, let's take a look and do a quick study on our reference photo for today's painting. If we look closer, we can notice that there's movements around the flowers. Let me draw it out for you. Here you can see that there's an S-curve around how they grow. Noticing this and then applying it in your sketch, this will be very helpful as this will lead the viewer's eyes through the painting diagonally adding movement in the piece. Another important key is to observe which directions the flower face. Placing flowers in different directions can counteract visual weight and create harmonious equilibrium. This can also further enhance the flow and movement in the entire painting. Lastly, also notice the placement of the flowers, whether it is in the foreground, middle or background. This can give a sense of spatial depth and dimension to the artwork. Later, I'll be showing you how we can bring forward or even recede a flower into the background with the use of warm and cool colors. Alright, let's start with the sketch. And I'd like you to take a moment to recognize that our canvas here represents a blank slate, a fresh start, unmarked and ready for the beautiful story we are about to paint. I'm just slightly sketching out the placement of the flowers with pencil, varying between bigger and smaller sizes of the flowers. Next, I'm going in with the paints. Feel free to pick any of your favourite shades of red. You may choose colours that resonate with your emotions. Just to give you a few examples, bright red represents intense emotions such as love, passion and desire. Maroon brings stability, endurance and strength, whereas pinkish red convey a sense of playfulness and innocence. Your palette that you choose will reflect the emotions and journey you wish to convey. I'm mixing in some browns to create a darker hue for the shadows and details. First, I start by painting out the big shapes of the flower with a light wash at the same time trying to carve out the corners and edges of the flowers. While this layer is still wet, I grab more paints and start adding in the second layer, slowly carving out the shapes of the petals. You want to have a thicker, less watery mixture of paints for the second layer so that you get more controlled brush strokes. If it's too watery, the paints might just spread out and cover the entire first layer. So having a good water control on your brush is important to achieve this loose floral effect. Next, I went in with thick dark brown paints to paint in the center of the flower. That will help to determine the direction your flower is facing. Then switching over to a synthetic brush, I continue with the third layer to paint in more fine lines and details of the petals. A synthetic brush picks up lesser amount of water as compared to a mop brush, hence it will help to give finer, more controlled brush strokes. This is when you start to see the flower come to shape. You can see that the first layer has started to dry, which is why I started getting some hard lines here. So I just blend those lines out with water to make them softer. We have a smaller flower on the top left, so I'm drawing out the details for that as well. 
Now take a moment to realize that this is your space to express yourself. Feel free to let your thoughts and feelings flow into the paper. It's okay if the painting takes unexpected turns. That's part of the artistic process and a metaphor for navigating through mental health challenges. Then going in with the leaves, I'm using my favorite green from Sennelia, which is their greenish umber. This is always my go-to green when it comes to painting dark leaves for roses. And then to tie in the colors, I'm adding in some browns to harmonize the browns that we have from the flowers. To bring in some variety, I added some warmer greens to balance out the cooler greens. So yeah, a good tip here is to keep in mind and try and look for ways where you can incorporate both warm and cool colors because this can also help to bring your painting to the next level. For added textures, I love scratching in some veins for the leaves. Once my flower is dry, I went in to add a little more details to the center and you can see how that just made the flowers pop. And that is pretty much the full steps for painting these loose roses. If you're giving this a try, I recommend practicing this on a separate sheet of paper. It might take a few tries to get it right, but once you get a hold of the water control on your brush and understand how much paints to apply, you are on your way to painting these gorgeous roses. If you make a mistake of applying two watery paints for the second or third layer, just like what I did here, you can see that my paint started spreading out into one another and becoming a huge blot. What you can do is to grab a clean, dry synthetic brush and then lift out the colors like so, and that will help to bring back the shape of the petals. I continue to add more leaves around the flowers. You can see that I've used really, really dark greens here. So don't be afraid to go as dark as possible because this can give a very nice contrast to the bright red flowers. For this painting, I find myself working downwards up. For most people, they will start from the center where the focus point is. I guess for me, it's up to you to start where you feel most comfortable, as long as you keep in mind where your focal point is, where the light is coming from and where the shadows are. Keep this in mind and not lose sight of it when you're painting. The rose is a powerful symbol of resilience, growth and beauty emerging from struggle. As we paint roses today, let's channel these themes into our artwork, celebrating the strength within all of us. As we paint our roses, think about the layers of petals and how each layer symbolizes growth and progress. Blend colors to show that even though there's transitions, beauty can emerge. Allow your emotions to guide your brushstrokes. Express how mental health has impacted you and how, like a rose, you've managed to bloom through adversity. Once I'm done with the flowers around the center focus point, I'm going to paint in the rest of the smaller flowers with lesser details. 
especially with those flowers which are further behind into the background, I will give less focus to those, painting them a little more blurry. Another tip when it comes to working with darker shadows around the leaves is to leave out some paper white areas to give the illusion of light coming through. This can help to prevent the shadows from overwhelming the entire area and maintain a harmonious balance between the light and dark elements. Now we are done with the flowers, I'll go ahead and fill up the empty spaces with more leaves and branches. At this point, I'm no longer looking at the reference picture, but just looking at my painting as a whole to see which areas could use more details. I continue to add some flowers in the background to create a fuller looking piece, paint in more leaves to balance out the composition and darkening the shadows to give more depth and contrast. Now it's time to complete the look of the flowers and add in those final details. Doing this helps to make the flowers look less flat and more dimensional. For the last step, I'm going to use my angle brush to leave out the colours around the darker shadows to bring back some of those highlights. Then using a small brush, I'm going to darken my shadows a little more to create these tiny accents. While it might not seem like a lot, they do really tie in all the elements together and create a cohesive painting overall. To ground the entire piece, I finish off by adding some shadows. I tried to paint the shadow according to the size in the reference picture but I think it turned out pretty odd, which is why you can see me trying to extend my shadows to the bottom of the page, hoping very much here that I did not ruin anything. And this is what the final piece looked like. I am pretty happy with how this turned out. If you did paint along, I would like to congratulate you for making it this far. Now do take a moment to reflect on your artwork. Remember, just like this painting, your mental health journey is an ever-evolving work of art. Embrace it, learn from it, and continue building upon it. Thank you for joining me in this creative endeavor for World Mental Health Day, exploring the symbolism of roses. May your painting serve as a reminder that within each of us lies the potential to bloom, grow and find beauty even amidst the struggles. Let's continue spreading awareness and understanding about mental health through art. If you like more full-length tutorials and exclusive content of my work, you may find them on my Patreon. Until next time, keep painting and embracing the beauty within. Take care.